Hey, it's Tupac, and I'm back in Dysfunctional Systems, and it's been a very long time since I updated it, or uploaded a video. Reason for that being, I've had a lot of homework. And also, another reason for that, I was playing Civ, and I got addicted, which caused me to procrastinate on my homework, making it a worse situation for myself. So, uh, yeah. I apologize for that. I will hopefully have this video out today, and then one on Sunday, and then hopefully stuff can continue on normally. Anyways, yeah. Let's get into it. Be practical, practically equipped just now. Good stuff. Meh. I hear her turn over. Don't tell me you're just gonna go back to sleep. No. And what are you doing getting comfy? Am I not allowed comfort in my own room? You're going to fall asleep. No, I won't. Mm, that response measure was measure slower. I don't think you're telling the truth. I won't waver, Lee. Oh, maybe I should read you some lines out of this book. That'd keep your attention. Waverly, please. Don't. I turned to an old page. Ah. Eleanor pressed her silver-tipped finger against his skin and hissed a single question. Winter groans loudly, mumbles I something I can't hear. Did you see Asta walking along the parapet, or didn't you? Martin's breath was still, and he turned his eyes from hers. Thoughts of his demon lover were still fresh in his mind. Asta's breath, Asta's taste, Asta's touch. Ah, her touch. Whether his heart had been courted or commanded, it mattered not. He felt for Asta, enough that he could never betray her. I hear Winter turn over again. Spare me. He's about to sleep with Eleanor, though, despite all this crap about Asta. Don't you want to know how that plays out? No. She coughs. No, please stop. Kekul, why are you reading that tripe? You're allowed... You read it inward fantasy fiction and you belittle my taste. I like reading inward fantasy because it's fun, so f <laughs> these books are fun too, but because but fun because they're terrible. You see, Winter, I enjoy these works because I can appreciate their silliness. I don't think they're actually good. Then you think they're awful and revel in that. Yep, authors from our world are all very good at what they do naturally. So it's nice to read some trashy nonsense for a change. You're making fun of other worlds. Yeah? Who cares? I don't know. That's right. Ah, uh, I might be handling this with the sensitivity of a jackhammer. Um, not that, uh... Oh man, what am I supposed to say? Not that I mean to imply... Waverly, it's fine. I don't mean to sound like it, that bothers me. Sorry. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Yeah. Winter. Winter Harrison's place. Oh, come on, you're kidding. Well, we'll pick this up in a bit. I rise from my seat. Coming. I walk over to the door, hoping that this will be over quickly, so I can return and clear the air. Opening it, I'm a bit taken aback to find a teacher and my first mentor. Henry Penn and Walter L. Why are they together? Come to think of it, they have always worn- have they always worn clothes so alike? They're looking like perfect, fashionable gentlemen. Henry. Are you quite alright, Waverly? Oh. Y yes hello sirs, can I help you? Waverly, how nice to see you again. I hope you've been well. I rise, raise my shoulders a little because I'm not sure how to answer. Oh, Walter, the student was your protege? Walter nods happily. It was her first, I believe, and I'm sure it was an honor. An honor? Eh. I cover my mouth, having spoken what I was thinking. I really... I am really in a mess today. Ha <laughs> ha, she kids, a regular, miniature me. Well, I hope not. I see. Oh, how rude of me. My apologies, Mr. Sire. I did not greet you. He gives me a halfway bow. Yep. 
Greetings, how are you doing today? Decent. I blink one at uh, once and hurry out an honorific. Uh, sir. That's good to hear. Can I help you? My roommate is sick and I was taking care of her, so... Please cut me loose already. Oh, of course. Might you give Mr. Harrison this letter and tell her to expect a meeting with me sometime later. I take the envelope that he offers me, not bothering to look it over. Winter Harrison, eh? That poor girl witnessed the end of a world. Correct. And what's worse, she witnesses Cyrus's mediating. Walter? It, it sounds like he was 200% Cyrus yesterday. Out and out so stupid. Walter smiles toothily. It looks me in the eye, which is weird, but Walter behavior. It's hard not to laugh at his flippant, foolish actions. I only don't, because unlike him, I solemn fight. I am solemn about these matters. But Cyrus, he has truly exceeded the limits of being an ass. He is in fact such a large ass that he puts his center lens to shame. Ah, uh, and, uh, what's this? Walter and Henry look to the right, my right, and peek past the door for him to see what's drawn their attention. Speak of the devil, and he doth appear, Mr. Cyrus Addington. Walter speaks like he's presenting a circus act, complete with showy hand motions and everything. He's right. There's Cyrus, looking a little paler than normal. Labor ends. I see that you're still attached to Penn's hip. That's a nice joke, Cyrus. You've always been good at jokes. Though I suppose that's no surprise, seeing as you're a pretty grand joke all your own. Out of the corner of my eye, I can see Walter sneering. I haven't had the opportunity to ask, are you properly ashamed of yourself, or am I to take your overbearing silence recently to be your... Oops. Uh, stop. Your standard brooding and angst. I'm not here to m mince words with you, Walter. Mr. Penn, are you finished here? If so, then I ask that you leave while I speak with my protege. Henry, who hadn't bothered to say anything between these two, speaks up. As a matter of fact, my business is done. I should let you know, though, Cyrus, that your protege is still infirm. He nods politely at me and indicates Cy indicating Cyrus to my presence. We were instead speaking to Miss to the young Mistress Iyer. She will do. Eh? In that case, Waverly, we will be departing now. Henry puts his hand on my shoulder and bends to whisper at my ear. You know where you need, you know where to find me if you need me. I hope. I understand if the recent events have been difficult for you to comprehend. I nod, giving my shoulder a rub as he lets me go and stands up straight. All right, Walter, quit. Quit sticking your tongue out at him. You're being childish. Come now, we're leaving. Right, right. Goodbye, Waverly. Hey, guys. My throat's hurting right now. Water break. <laughs> but I'm going to forget to edit this out, so I'm just going to talk if you understand me. Cool. Even though I don't expect you to. Uh. I'm sorry, my throat just hasn't been the best the past couple of days, which is bad sign because there's a thing going around campus where everyone's getting sick right now. Ugh. I did not wash that cup out well. S taste soap. Mm. Goodbye, Waverly. Ugh. So much soap is in my mouth right now. Ugh. Yes, goodbye, Waverly. Henry and Walter walk towards Cyrus while the elder mediator continues past him. The younger stops at Cyrus' side. I strain my ears to listen. I really am fucking disappointed in you. I don't know what you're thinking, but you need to take this job seriously. You asked to be a men mentor, now start acting like one. 
We're not work you're not working alone anymore. After this, Cyrus answers, but I can't hear what he says. Walter grabs him by the shoulder and snarls, whispering something else. Cyrus refuses to look at him, and Walter scoffs, shoving Cyrus out of his way and catching up with Henry, leaving Cyrus to just stand there with his head down. Man, they're so weird. Adults are so weird. After a few moments of nothing, he walks over to the door, his gaze still fixed to the ground. Hello, Waverly. Hey. You awkward, creepy bastard. I, uh, I'm not... He finally looks me in the eyes. I'm not entirely sure what to say. You and me both. I just know that I haven't properly apologized. Not that this is properly apologizing, having a student relay the message for me. It's immature, but I imagine I can't talk to Winter herself right now. I say nothing because there's nothing polite to say. I want you to tell Winter that I'm sorry. I want you to tell her that absolutely nothing happened. That happened was her fault. I suppose that's all I want to say that can pass through you. The blame is wholly mine, and I want her to know that she did nothing wrong. I can see that he wants to explain himself more, but it's hurting him to try. I'd uh, better speak up. Sarah, I'll tell her. Can I ask you something, sir? I heard you killed a leader, and that something bad happened because of that. Wasn't that, uh, well, a dumb idea? Didn't you think that wouldn't happen? Did you think that wouldn't happen? Cyrus doesn't have an answer doesn't answer for long enough that I think he's not going to answer, but he speaks before I can say never mind. I listen, this is something difficult for students such as yourself to understand, but I knew full well it would happen. What? Listen. Why on earth should I? It's something you eventually must understand. The situation was a quagmire. Many of the options available to us could have likely could have very likely made things turn out worse rather than better. You'll have to believe me that in this case, the best course of action to promote order was to allow some that something bad to happen. I have to hear what Winter says, because that sounds like nonsense. The larger issue was that I underestimated the consequences. To put it bluntly, I did not properly research. I was overconfident. Sewell, that is, the system we had visited, visited it was a very chaotic world, although inconsistently. Scientific discovery happened both quickly and suddenly there. Large leaps in technological prowess were spurred by random discovery. It was a very unusual system. And I knew that, but I did not give it proper consideration. I had expected some losses from my actions, but certainly not the loss of the entire world. In short, I misjudged and rushed things. You know how I rush things. Don't smile at me, you fiend. You can't just tell me you allowed a world to die and expect me to smile back. Yeah, I know you're calling on those rumors about yourself being a grimly logical murder-happy bastard, but it's not really funny knowing that it, that's true and what it entails. Well, unless you have any more questions. What did Walter mean when you said you asked to be a mentor? What am I doing? Waverly, you get where do you get off talking like a pal with a superior and asking such personal questions? You weren't even supposed to hear that. Heavens, are you a buffoon? Why am I a pirate? <laughs> when are ye? Is that what dialect is that? Far more than he knew when he said it. However, I don't think that's a matter to discuss with you kids. Sorry. No, it's fine, it's fine. Is that all? Uh, yeah. Then thank you for listening to me, Waverly. Again, I'm sorry to put this responsibility onto you, but I would really appreciate it if you could do this for me. I will, I will, don't worry. He chuckles. You've certainly opened up a lot more, Waverly. This... This is making it seem like I made a fine decision to become a mentor. 
get to watch you guys grow up. I may have forgotten what it means to grow up. By the way, you shouldn't leave John. Considering it, I decide to smile. Don't talk about private matters in public then, sir. <sighs> I'll try not to. Then I'll be leaving Waverly. Peace to you. Aye, and to you. He nods to me and walks away. I shut the door. I'm not sure on what my opinion of Cyrus is now. Maybe it's worse? I shudder to think it's any better, but... Well, I guess he... Ugh, this isn't something I can work out right now. Yo, Winter. What? You're very popular today. We've had a total of three visitors come for you. What was it technically for? Ah, whatever. What can I say? I'm very charming. Well, Mistress Charming, I have a letter for you. I walk over to her bedside to hand over the thing. Before I do, though, I decide I should have a look at what the envelope says. For whenever it's too much to bear, read this, Henry Penn. Huh. Well, here you are. I toss it down next to her pillow, where she reads it sideways. From Mr. Penn. Hmm. Yep, and, um, also, I'm sorry about kind of talking dismissively about worlds. I told you that I really didn't mind. I'm still sorry, I shouldn't really, I don't really, I shouldn't have been talking that way anyway. You don't really need to apologize, Waverly. Cyrus is also sorry. Winter falls silent. Hey, come on, just listen to what he had to say. I'm listening. He's sorry, and he wants to know that it's not your fault, it's his. He doesn't want you to blame yourself. He knows he's fucked up, Winter. Even if he's a jerk, you should forgive him for yourself. It's not that simple, Waverly. You didn't hear him yesterday. He almost certainly does not feel bad about what he did. He may just feel bad about letting me see it. I mean, even if I wasn't concerned of his motivations, he still treated me awfully and made me watch him kill a person. Furthermore, even if he had succeeded, millions still would have died. Pardon my language, but f screw Cyrus Eddington. A dark feeling grows inside my belly. I push it down. Nothing good comes from harboring bad will. I can't pretend I know what it's like, Winter, but... I know that just feeling shit about things isn't going to help you. I swallow. And I hate to say it, but you're probably going to see a lot more pe of people killing people in this line of work. We also both know that we may, may end up killing a few or several ourselves, but nobody wants to acknowledge that. I let out a sigh. This is depressing talk. It's best if we move on. Well, whatever then. Whatever. I think we've delayed you eating for long enough. Okay, guys, I'm gonna end it here because my throat is not doing well. Oh, this sucks because now I know I'm gonna get sick. Great. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.